In this video, you will learn about the most common options you can choose from when it's busy in the water. This tutorial is a part of our positioning course, in which we go over where to sit accordingly to different types of surf spots, how to position yourself more precisely for waves, and how to increase your agility in the water. Visit our online coaching platform at tutorials.barefoot.surf for more information. See the link in the description of this video. Doing a spot check often refers to things like looking out for hazards, rip currents, analysing waves, where they break, how they peel, how frequently sets come through and more. One of the most important elements to evaluate during a spot check is the crowd. How many surfers are out there? Where are they sitting? Are most of them waiting for set waves or are they sitting further inside? What are their surfing levels and how do they compare to yours? These are all the questions you should ask yourself to determine where to sit in the lineup, a decision that can have a massive impact on your wave count on any given session. The optimal situation for surfers is to sit near the peak in order to maximise their ride. This is in an ideal world where the spots are uncrowded or in a wave pool where surfers don't have to compete for waves. In reality though, most surfers have to deal with surfing in crowds of different sizes and might choose to sit in a less optimal spot in order to increase their wave count. The first choice you can make is to sacrifice the quality for quantity and sit where it's less busy. The best peaks tend to be more crowded. For example, here in this spot, the best waves could be breaking on the left side of the beach. You could decide to sit at the peak on the right. Waves might not be perfect, but you could end up catching a lot more waves. Once you choose your peak, you have four main options to choose from. You can either sit outside, sit at the peak, sit wide or sit on the inside. When a spot is not too crowded, most surfers will sit outside or directly at the peak because that's usually how you can get the longest and most enjoyable rides. However, the busier the spot becomes, the more attractive sitting wide or sitting inside can become. Let's analyse each of these options and when you should or should not consider them. Sitting outside means sitting further out than the average waves are breaking, in order to be in a better position to catch the larger set waves which break further out. Some important questions to ask yourself are, how frequent are the sets and how busy is it on the outside? If, for example, there's only one two-wave set every 15 minutes and there are already 15 surfers waiting outside, it might not be the most attractive option. You also need to consider how skilled the other surfers are on the outside. When sitting further out, you need to have solid wave reading skills to be amongst the first surfers to notice that set waves are on the horizon. As waves get closer to breaking towards the shore, they give out more and more physical cues like colour changing, peak formation, feathering and more. By sitting on the outside, you often don't have as many cues to make positioning decisions. If you're sitting on the outside, surrounded by more experienced surfers than you, it could make it quite difficult for you to find waves. On the other hand, sometimes it's not that crowded on the outside and sets can come more frequently. For example, every seven minutes, there could be an average of four waves per set instead of two. Then it might be a good choice for you to sit further out. Keep in mind, sitting outside is about prioritizing quality over quantity. You're basically saying no to every smaller wave that comes by as it's impossible for you to catch them. If you are still at a level where you fall off very frequently, then you might want to sit somewhere you can catch more waves to be able to practice. If your goal is to get a few good bigger waves and you have the patience to wait for the sets, then this could be a good option for you. The most popular option is sitting at the peak. It will be the most densely crowded area as this is where the quality waves are coming through at the highest frequency. Again, you can ask yourself similar questions. How many surfers are sitting at the peak and how do their surfing levels compare to yours? If it's not too crowded, the answer is easy. You sit at the peak. That's where you'll get better waves. If it's very crowded, then you would probably be better sitting off wide or sitting inside. If it's medium crowded, then you need to pay a bit more attention to the type of crowd you'll be dealing with. 
Are most of the surfers taking turns or are they competing and paddling for every wave that comes through? You may have experienced this situation before. Surfers at the peak want to be in the dominating position, so they sit deeper and deeper even past the peak. The issue for some lower intermediate surfers is that they usually don't have the skills to do a very deep takeoff behind the peak and draw the perfect line to be able to make the wave. Therefore, their only option is to keep paddling deeper and deeper following the crowd to protect their priority. But when it's time to catch a wave, they're positioned too deep for their skill level and get stuck in the white water once they get up. In other situations, the vibe can be more relaxed and surfers at the peak can let each other catch waves. When deciding to sit at the peak or not, don't just look at the size of the crowd. Try to analyse its dynamic so that you have a better understanding of how difficult it would be for you to catch a wave there. Sitting inside means sitting further back down towards the beach compared to where most surfers are sitting. The main advantage of sitting inside is that you can potentially catch a lot more waves there. You can catch all the smaller waves that the surfers near the peak aren't able to paddle into. Sometimes, the surfers at the peak decide not to paddle for a certain wave because it doesn't look like it's going to peel nicely, but then towards the end, it starts to shape up nicely. You can catch all of those leftover waves. There are other situations in which you could also catch high quality waves, not just smaller waves or leftover waves. For example, a surfer could try and catch a wave and miss it, and you could turn around and paddle into it. Surfers at the peak can take off too deep and get stuck in the white water. They can potentially not make it through the section, or they could simply wipe out. In any of these situations, you could benefit from their misfortune and surf the wave. Sometimes a peak can be very crowded, but with a lot of inexperienced surfers. The more surfers at the peak tend to wipe out, the more sitting inside becomes appealing, since you might be able to catch a lot of waves which they're wiping out on. There are some major advantages to sitting inside, and there's also some serious drawbacks. Sitting inside often means that you're willing to roll the dice. If the biggest set of the day comes by, there's a good chance you won't be able to make it past over the waves and have the set break right in front of you. You have to be willing to pay the price if you decide to sit on the inside. The other thing to consider is that you need to be very alert in order to move out of the way from the other surfers riding the wave from the peak. Some surfers will get annoyed if you wait on the inside and you're not very vigilant because they might need to change their lines and might not be able to make it past the wave section. Obviously, on an average, you will be catching smaller and lower quality waves as the majority of the good waves will be taken by the surfers at the peak. Another way to separate yourself from a crowded peak is to sit wide. Similar to sitting inside, often the idea is to sacrifice quality for quantity. The difference is you won't necessarily be catching smaller waves on the inside. Instead, you'll be catching waves that are a bit different than the average sets of the day, oftentimes coming in on a slightly different angle. For example, at this spot here, it could be possible that 80% of the waves are coming in at this angle, but 20% of the waves come in at this angle. And when they do, instead of breaking at the peak, they break wide of the peak. So again, it will be up to you to take a bit more time to analyse. How many people are sitting at the peak versus how many people are sitting wide? How frequently do the waves break wide of the peak? But also, are the waves that are breaking wide any good? Sitting wide is an option that is really spot specific. Some spots will offer an average to good wide peak and deliver fairly consistent waves at that location. At other surf spots though, the waves that break wide can be very poor and consistently close out, so it could not even be an option. It is possible that, for an example, waves breaking wide are a bit slower and softer, and that's why most experienced surfers don't sit there, but as a beginner intermediate this could be exactly the type of waves you are looking for. It mostly will depend on the spot's bottom contour, but also the swell direction and the tide. Remember to move around. If you've made a decision on where to sit and after 20 or 30 minutes you aren't catching any waves or having fun, then change your plan. Look around and try to find either another peak or another way to position yourself for the peak that you're currently surfing. Remember to always keep your head up for opportunities. A great wave can come in at the most unexpected moment, such as when you're paddling back out towards the peak after riding a wave. On busy days, these are bonus waves. These can help you feel satisfied about your surf session. 
If you want to learn more about learning to surf more efficiently, make sure you subscribe to our channel and consider joining our mailing list for exclusive information from us. At Barefoot Surf, we coach surfers one-on-one -on, -one on our surf coaching retreats around the world. And we help surfers kickstart their surf progression journey through our online coaching platform and community. If you want to learn more about how to accelerate your surf progression, connect with a community of like-minded surfers, and solidify your knowledge on foundations of surf technique, visit tutorials.barefoot.surf.